The most common question I get asked about on boats is how much everything costs. So today, I'm gonna to take you around this Princess 60 that we've just taken in part exchange, and then I'm gonna tell you every single cost that I can think of so you know what the damage is gonna be per annum. So let's go do it. I sold this boat new in 2016 to a lovely couple down in Lymington and they had her for a few years and since that time I've had her back once or twice as people have upgraded. It's a massive Princess 60 and they didn't sell in huge numbers and the reason being is the 56 just below her, her smaller sister, sold in big numbers and gave you the same three cabins but this gave you an extra bathroom but it did cost you a lot more money anyway i sold a few and this one i'm going to give you a full tour of so let's start with the platform the platform here is a high low as you normally expect but you can put a bigger williams sport jet 395 on her so come on board and let's go and have a look around so the cockpit area is a lovely space and under here is the crew but i'll show you that last you've got the aft cockpit table which has got lots of room around it i think you could probably get six or seven of you maybe even eight actually if you tried oh have you seen my socks can you recognize who that is no that is queen and it says can you read what it says on the bottom we will sock you. <laughs> that is so stupid. I've got skin tight jeans on or I need to lose some weight as well. Um, so yeah, good size cockpit, all teak, really, really good. Deck equipment as well. You've got the storage there for the ropes and the aft winch. And this one's done in a really tasteful gray, which never, ever, ever upsets anyone, which is good. So let's go and show you the saloon. The Princess 60 saloon is beautiful. This one's finished in walnut satin and you've got this little kind of, you see this finish? You've kind of got this weave finish, which is quite nice and really natural, neutral colors, which the owner specified. Loads of seating here. Can you see all this seating? You could probably get 10 people here. You've got the high-low TV there. Um, you've got the drinks cabinet here. Let's have a look at the drinks cabinet. Oh, what's that? That's got a Fairline glass in it. This is a princess. All right, we'll leave that. Oh, let me show you the heating. This boat has got Eberspatcher heating, which is really, really powerful because it's been used in England. Actually, that's the Eberspatcher. They're both Eberspatcher. And over here, you've got air conditioning and reverse cycle heating as well which has only just been put in in 2022 so that's all brand new so that's really good oh just happened to see this book on the table you see that the cape i don't know how you pronounce it a galoos by michael mcmullin now the reason i've got that book out is because i'm in it James Bark, the boat dealer, is in this boat. And it's available in all good bookshops. And I don't get any commission for that. It's a book. Okay, so we have the, the galley to starboard, but I've got a little trick I wanna show you. If you just stand back a little bit, so you don't see all the mess while I'm cooking, I have this electric screen, sir. Look at that. So you, if I make loads of mess, you can't see what I'm up to. And that is what you get when you spend over a million pounds. You get a little glass shield that moves away electrically. You've got the extractor, you've got the hob, you've got the fridge. Come and have a look around here. You've got all the normal cabins. I like the fact that the microwave is hidden in there. That's the dishwasher. I'm not going to open all the cutlery drawers, but I am going to open the fridge because... I like it. It's got a really big fridge. And a nice cutting board and and a lovely dinette opposite. So you can cook. I believe that's my notes for later because I'm going to tell you about the costings. And you can eat straight opposite the galley 
So all in all, pretty cool. When this boat was new, the first owner specified lots of interesting equipment, like it's got a wind system. Do you see that? So he'd always know how um, fast the wind was blowing and in which direction. This boat has also got fins, stabilization, which this screen controls here. He's also gone for proportional thrusters. And what you can't tell by looking at all these buttons, but he put a very big transducer in so you get a much clearer echo of the seabed. So these are these at the time in 2016 were the best screens Raymarine did and they show the depth of the boat. Now while we're here, because you know I like to show you what's and all, I just want to show you that the P from the Princess has fallen off. But what's quite nice, it is actually stainless steel because some of them are plastic but it's actually a proper bit of stainless. Okay, so over by the helm here, we've got the rest of the normal gauges. This gauge here, this is a bonning system which controls all the electrics on the boat. So this is what you've got over and above the Princess 56. The Princess 56 has got standard controls, but when you went to 60 or above, you get the boning control system, which is really good, and they're very, very easy to use. But, what I also love is you have the shout window, which I think we've got a test because it's quite a nice day. Oi, get the fenders in. And it goes all the way down and that sun shining in my face. And also, if you look over to the port side, we've got a window. Oh, it does open. We've got a window over there too. I won't show it all the way down, but you've got a nice window there. So all in all, the lower helm is really, really good. So let's go down below. Okay, so come downstairs and we're going to go to the aft master cabin. So if you follow me. Now, the disappointing thing about this cabin is this is normally where the sock sofa would go, but this customer specified extra stowage. So we've got a set of drawers on this side and we've got a set of drawers on this side. So you've got loads and loads of storage, big wardrobe with a light in there, lovely TV. Now let's see if it's got, it's got plug sockets either side of the bed, which is great. And it's got it there. And what every princess includes is a vice spring mattress, which means you're going to have a great night's sleep. Now also, while we're down here, look at the size of the window. This is a really big feature of this model. The glass is huge. Now years ago, we couldn't put glass this big in boats because it wasn't strong enough, but now they've got a structural glass. You can have these lovely windows, but this is showing the view of our Essex South End on Sea base. But you can imagine if that was a blue sunshine soaked beach in the med it'd be another level so coming out of the aft bedroom you've got some storage under here you've got the bathroom here with a lovely shower and the signature perineum row um, sinks and if you poke your head around the corner you'll see it's got a really nice towel radiator which we fitted from new and a sliding door then in the well you call this the kind of landing area you've also got a washer dryer made by LG. That's more storage. This area here then leads onto the day head. This is called your day head. And it's huge. Now, I haven't got a towel to demonstrate, but I can tell you that the floss test, it passes with flying colors. And look at the shower. There's the shower. And here's the storage, loads of storage. Really, really, really good day head. So let's go forward to the VIP. And you've got a little dressing table area here. Loads of storage here. What's that? I won't shut, that's why it's open. TV, really good light. You've got a sun hatch here, which I'll leave shut 
and these two opening windows here. You've got a wardrobe, another vice spring mattress, and this the beautiful princess bathrooms, which also passes the floss test. Can you believe it? I've turned everything off and now the VHF's going, but really, really good bathroom. So let's go look at the cabin three. Okay, so this is cabin three, and what makes this cabin nice is it's got a beautiful bathroom, which is there, have a little look. Now this one does pass the floss test, but only just, I'll be honest with you. But it makes up for it by giving you beds that move together. Oh, go on. Okay, I know it's not the quickest, but that makes it into a double. Air conditioning, loads of cupboard storage, big wardrobe, TV. It's got everything. Really nice cabin. So let's go and see the flybridge. Okay, so come on the flybridge. This is the fully convertible version. You can have a hard top version, uh, but this customer always loved the wind in the hair feeling. Look at the visibility out the front there. Really nice. Everything mirrored up here. This area here, I won't demonstrate it, but turns into a sunbed. You've got a barbecue here. And I think that's a bin. It's, a, it's actually a, another refrigeration area. Look at this lovely table and look at the finish on the legs. I don't need to clean, but you've got stainless legs, lovely teak top, and a huge amount of deck space. Absolutely love this area. Now, one thing Princess could brush up on is these areas that are grey are actually painted. So you can see there's some marks here, and this is because it's painted. On some other manufacturers nowadays, like the Squadron 68 I recently did, you'll see these are gel coated. Listen to how noisy those seagulls are. Over here, this is SAT TV, which we don't tend to fit very often these days. You've got the Super HD radar, and then you'll also see the wind instrument there that I told you about down below. That's an active radar reflector, so big ships can see you. That's the TV mask that looks like something out of Star Trek. Let me show you. Wait a sec. That's the TV aerial. Spotlight, nav lights. And over the air, on the other side, on the, on the starboard side, you've got the um, GPS antenna. Got all music up here. Really, really good space. It's not a bad day today, actually, is it? It's a bit cold. And there's our office, there's my office over there, look. That's where, I, uh, that's where I work sometimes. So let's go and do the engine room. Okay, so let's go and have a look in the engine bay before the alarms go off that says it's got low voltage again. So come have a look down here. Oh, you're up there, son. <laughs> pass, us the, pass us the phone. Okay, so here's the engine bay. And this boat is fitted with the Volvo Penta D13 900s, which means 13 litres each, because there's two of them, as you can see. There's the fuel tanks, the fire extinguisher system. Look at the, all these filters, look, loads of filters. There's the um, fuel filters, and the extractor fan there. You've got uh, a generator there, which is an Onan, about 20 kVA. And then you've got the hydraulic pack, which powers the fins and the thrusters. That, by the way, is an exhaust muffler. Yes, that's one exhaust muffler. These engines are loud. There's the gearbox and the shaft. And a bit better view there. It's all very, very nice. There's some more fuel filters. Top points princess I nearly forgot but I'm going to show you the crew cabin which is under here and if I go down here and show you there's not a lot to show you but you've got one bed you've got a storage area 
and you've got a toilet and a shower which you wouldn't want to use. I must say the, this crew cabin is usable unlike the Princess S60 or S65 and it's got heating too. So this passes, but let me get out of here. I don't really like crew cabins. Right. Right, let's do summary. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through detailed costs for this boat. Uh, quickly, before I do, thank you everyone that subscribes to us. I'm very, very humbled that you choose to watch this channel. Um, if you do like the videos, but you're not a subscriber, it would make me really happy if you could press that subscribe button on the screen and give me a thumbs up and do ask me questions. I do try and answer every question, so long as it's not totally silly. And there's that alarm again. Okay, let me just turn that off. I can do it, I can do it, let me turn it off. And then we can carry on. Okay, right, so costs. Okay, the first one we're gonna do is fuel. So if we assume 20 knots, this boat uh, does about 30 knots flat out, but 20 knots is a good speed. It's got about 2,800 litre capacity fuel tank. So at 20 knots, these engines will be doing about 1,800 RPM, uh, which uses about 100 litres per engine per hour. So let's just say 200 litres uh, per hour. The fuel cost in the UK at the moment, this is filmed in April 22, is about £1.80 per litre. So that's about £360 per hour at 20 knots. Remember, in that hour, you've done 20 nautical miles and this boat probably weighs 40 tonnes. So I know some people say, oh, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but remember, this is... 40 ton boat, it's like moving a house along the sea at 20 miles an hour. You'd use a lot of fuel if you were doing that. Um, so if the average customer in Europe uses their boat for about 50 hours a year, that's 50 engine hours. They obviously use it for much more than that because they go somewhere for an hour and then stay there for a few days. But 50 engine hours per year is normal and that would give you 50 times 360 pounds which is about 18,000 pounds per year. Next one is finance costs. Now I don't normally talk about finance costs much because some people think it's boring, but I will actually explain finance costs on this boat. So this boat is currently for sale with us on boats.co.uk for 1.15 million pounds, including VAT. Banks will want you to put down about 30% deposit, which is about, let's call it 350, which means you'd have to finance the difference of 800,000. In the UK, we've got a choice of a few banks, and 800,000 pounds would equate to approximately 8,000 pounds per month for your direct debit. Um, that's a mixture of interest and capital repayment. Um, and this is a straight line curve from 800,000 to naught over 10 years. So at the end of 10 years, you own the boat. There's no balloon or anything clever like that. This is just straightforward finance costs. So 8,000 uh, pounds per month is approximately 96,000 pounds per annum. Um, and of that £96,000 per annum, per annum, I've estimated that about 60000 of that is capital and the rest of it is interest. So now let's summarise all the costs, including the fuel, including the finance and all your other normal expenses. And we'll put them up on the screen for you. So a UK berth for a boat this size would be about £18,000 per year. Servicing for these two engines is about six thousand pounds per year, and what's funny? My finger went across the All right. Uh, Anti-foul anodes, polishing, and maintenance is about ten thousand pounds per year, and 
then you've got depreciation. Now, you, some people include depreciation and some people don't. If you do include it, I would say this would depreciate in the next 12 months at about 50,000 pounds. We've already done the fuel, which is 18,000 pounds if you used it fully for a year. And you've got the finance cost of 96,000 pounds. So you add those all together and you're looking about 203,000 pounds per year. But the story doesn't end there because although that adds up to a staggering £17,000 a month, I would estimate about half of those costs are actual what I call cash burn costs of owning the boat. And the other half is money that you're investing into the boat in terms of its capital, etc., which you should get back most of it. So if you work on the actual cost being about £100,000 a year, which in real terms is about 8, 10% um, 8, that kind of money of the, uh, of, the total, of the total value. So it's quite a lot, but insurance. insurance. Oh, did I do insurance? Oh, sorry. Insurance was £8,000 per annum. Um, so that is included, by the way, in my, in my cost. Sorry about that, Will pointed out. So that is what it costs you to run this boat. And I don't think that's too terrible for a boat of this value. And the fun you can have on this is immeasurable. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Do ask me questions, especially about financing and the cost of running a boat because I get asked all the time. I'm happy to answer all your questions. That's all for now. Okay, so let's go and show you the lower helm. Ah!